Hi, it's me, the Acres for Fun. For today's video, I'll be talking about my preferred CO2 setup for planted tanks. Okay, so this video is for everybody who's been searching for the best price to performance ratio. For this setup, you'll be saving a whole lot more money because if you are just like me, we all know how expensive this hobby can get. Hello, I like money. And for the meantime, I'm gonna stop recommending the DIY CO2 setup. Wanna know why? Well, because of this. This happened. Let me show you my budget pressurized CO2 setup. First thing you'll need is a CO2 fire extinguisher, a CO2 regulator with a solenoid valve, CO2 resistant tubings, and a piece of check valve or a one-way valve. What is that noise? And of course, let's not forget about your CO2 delivery method. There are multiple types of CO2 delivery method. You can either get a cheap nano glass diffuser atomizer, also known as a bazooka. It's an inline diffuser. Okay, so a pressurized CO2 setup is composed of three main things. That's your pressurized CO2, your CO2 regulator with a solenoid valve, and your primary method of distribution. Remove this safety cap. Now you can attach your CO2 regulator. What I usually do is insert it at an angle like this one, hand tighten this screw. This cheap CO2 regulator that I got already came in with this tool. You can use this tool to tighten it onto the fire extinguisher. Since it is at a 90 degree, once you screw it in and tighten it, it should be in the right place. Not too tight, not too loose. This cheap CO2 regulator that I got also came in with this bubble counter. Always fill your bubble counter more than three quarters way through. We'll just have to put this one here. Now that you've got that connected, just unscrew this part right here. Insert it along the tubes of your CO2 resistant tubing like that. Now your CO2 resistant tubing goes right into the bubble counter's nipple. <laughs> nipple. Oh, yes! Pull my nipple! Yeah, baby! Yeah! Oh, I love that shit. Yeah. This will come down and screw it tight. Should be safe and secure. Yaga! 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 As you can see, it is already connected to a one-way valve or a check valve. This check valve will prevent water from coming back into your system. Now, at the end of this tubing is your choice of delivery. There are many ways to deliver CO2 to your planted aquarium. You can use a glass diffuser. You can also use an atomizer. Now, there are many products out there that has great reviews like Aquarios Neo Diffuser or the Twin Stars Diffusers. You can get one of those. And just like what I've said earlier, if you have access to an external canister filter, you can use an inline diffuser. This is an inline diffuser. It is actually the inline diffuser that I'm using in this aquascape. Now, just remove this gray part, attach it onto your line. Now, the tube goes onto where? The nipple. Seriously, what the fuck are you doing? And then just screw the gray part here. As you can see, it is very secure. And then you'll just connect this to your external canister filter and into the outflow pipe. Now, I forgot to mention this to you earlier. If you're gonna use a pressurized CO2 setup, it will be highly suggested to get a plug-in timer like this one, or you can get an even fancier one Fancy. by buying smart plugs. Good brains. <laughs> Preferably, you should start your CO2 setup one to two hours before your lights goes on. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on. Just press this part, you'll start to see this pressure gauge is working. 
There you go. Now you'll need this cable tie to secure this handle. We'll just have to slowly adjust it. Now it's releasing CO2. If you have your CO2 diffusers right here, it is highly suggested to place it directly opposite where your outflow is coming from. Water should be flowing here and then distributing the small bubbles that will come out of here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on now. Now, if you have water flow coming from the other end, it should be able to blow the bubbles away and then distribute it all, all over your planted aquarium. Hey y'all, come look at this! Okay, next up is your atomizer or the bazooka. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the CO2 for this um, atomizer. As you can see, bubbles are starting to form up underneath. And as it builds up pressure, it'll slowly give off bubbles. Just like that one. Highly suggested to run it at full blast for 10 to 15 seconds. You can slowly adjust your CO2 to the desired rate. Okay, so right now I am at 1 to 2 bubbles per second. It is giving off finer micro bubbles compared to the glass diffuser from earlier. Now the finer the bubbles, the better because that means you'll be able to distribute it all over your aquarium more efficiently. The camera isn't picking it up but I can see micro bubbles all over this quarantine tank right now. So next up, I'm gonna show you how bubbles come out of my inline diffuser. Okay, so that's too much. The camera isn't picking up the micro bubbles that is coming out of my outflow, which is a good sign. Whew. Okay, so for all of my UK viewers, are you about to run out of CO2 for your planted aquariums or planning to transition from a DIY CO2 into a much better pressurized CO2 setup? Boy, do I have some great news for you. Right down there in the description box below is a Facebook group called Freedom Fire. All of their deliveries are next day deliveries. So just in case you messed up or forgot to check the CO2 levels on your tank, Freedom Fire's got your back. They've got awesome prices. The more you buy from them, the more savings you'll get. They are very helpful. They're very responsive. The prices are great and they offer next day delivery. What more could you ask for? Okay, so I guess that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe and click that like button right there because in this channel, I talk about aquascaping, fishcaping, and some general tips and guides on how to be a better aquarist. So that's it for me. Bye.